we could have Arabic characters, which of course doesn't really translate well onto the PSTN in the US where they have some kind of subset of ASCII. So we need to handle this as well as domains, both in from and to caller IDs. So that's work that uh, I really would like to complete. I started doing that. Another thing I started but halted is something called Cone and Pineapple. And if you have any ideas on how we as a community can get financing or solve that, uh, clean up and rewrite of the zip stack, I'm all ears because I haven't found a solution. I got banned. Some kind of feedback here from Doug at Sangoma that I didn't answer mail, so I have to be better at answering mail. <laughs> Phone. Yeah, you can signal SIP to me, but don't try media. Um, Business-wise, what I'm doing with Asterisk, I s tend to spend most of my time with carriers all around the world, either fixing issues with Asterisk in their networks or at actually building their network architecture, building asterisk or uh, adding OpenSeer to existing asterisk installation. So they're all pretty large-scale environments. And where we see problems right now, because most of the carriers, they, they found out that becoming the next Vonage won't happen. So you're moving to Centrix kind of business solutions, hosted PBXs, and there's a lot of issues there in asterisk that we probably may solve with the distributed event system, but there's still a lot of issues that we need to handle in there. So that's really what I'm working with. Now, to some of my personal interest to finish off, but it touches asterisk quite a lot. Geocaching, how many here are geocachers? Cool, we have to find, some there's something outside my hotel. We need to find that. We need to go there. Geocaching is a treasure hunt worldwide. And it's very good when you work as I do, sitting, spending a lot of time in airports and then ending up in hotels and remote offices. Walking around with the GPS, you get in very interesting new areas. In Huntsville, Alabama, I brought Jared Smith, who used to be working with community relationship in, Astro in uh, Digium and now works with uh, trainings. So I took him out and said, well, before dinner, we're just going around the corner here, up by Cheeburger, to find a cache. And we spent four hours. We went through wild jungles, crossing a river, and oh, it was real amazing. And the sun went down, because it does that in that part of the world. Not in Sweden anymore. It stays up. So geocaching is cool. Location is cool. And location is extremely important for the nomadic VoIP. If we're going to be allowed to run around with soft phones and computers connecting to hotel networks and placing calls, we need to handle location properly. ITF has been doing a lot of work here. People need to be able to geocache and find us when we place calls. If I'm in Germany connecting to a Swedish emergency center, well, doesn't help much, right? So there's a lot of work going on here, and Asterisk has a big role to fill, and we need to handle this properly. Jabber, in Asterisk 1.4, we added a lot of Jabber stuff. We added support for Google Talk. We added support for Asterisk connecting to a Jabber server, either as a client or as a component. This is really cool, and I'm really surprised that we haven't gotten a lot of feedback from the community. We haven't heard about all the sexy stuff you're building with all this stuff. And there's a lot of more work to do. I believe that Jabber is sometimes when I'm depressed, really depressed, going like Vonko on the beach, I believe that Jabber is the next sip. Because the PCN guys hasn't found Jabber and they haven't, haven't added 3,000 pages of specs on how to interface with SS7 and ISDN and all that crap. Jabber with audio video, hmm, there's a lot of cool things happening in this area. There's a lot of new application innovation happening in this area, and we need to be involved. I visited the Jabber DevCon. They were at our DevCon, the Asterisk Developer Meeting in Atlanta, and Philip, a programmer in Paris at INRIA, and me visited their European DevCon in Brussels.
And when we told, told the Jabra people what they can do with Asterisk, they were amazed. So you mean that our Jabber network can connect to the PSN? You mean that? I said, well, yes, yes, yes. And they're like, oh, wow. So this is really, really cool stuff. And the good thing is that the protocols themselves have very limited PSN gateway functionality. <laughs> cool. Presence. Everyone talks about presence. But where's the real stuff that I can use in my business? Because if I'm connecting to my large worldwide business at Vina with all these employees standing here on the stage, anyway, uh, but if I would have a larger business and I publish my presence as I have a business meeting to discuss a contract with Stefan Wintermeyer, I don't want everyone else to see that. They, w they should see properly that I'm busy in a meeting. So I want to propagate different information to different people. And then I want to connect asterisk. And since I'm a male, yeah, uh, okay, confirm. Since I'm a male, I'm single tasking. So when I'm talking on the phone, my asterisk needs to tell my jabber that Ul is busy, he won't respond to chat, because one thing at a time. My wife claims that she can actually bicycle, listen to a book on a CD, and chat with friends at the same time. So if she's on the phone, her asterisk shouldn't say, tell Jabber that she's away. It should still be green, maybe with an attribute saying, on the phone, but I love to chat with you at the same time because it's a boring call. So, we need personal profiles here, and we need to integrate this stuff in a good way. And that's a lot of work that needs to be done, but what we said at Asterisk DevCon was that Asterisk will deliver call states. The rest is up to the present system. I would love to see more work going on there, because I have customers that want to pay for this. It's cool stuff. And video, I already told you about video sharing, working together with video, with the fancy Tanberg terminals. That's way cool. And there's a lot of new apps coming here. I helped a customer set up a video blog with Asterisk. So you call in with video phones, 3G or SIP video phones, and you end up with a video on a blog site. And that's stuff you can do with Asterisk and video, and we'll see tons of new applications in this area with video and Asterisk. So, cool stuff going on, and I have a lot of video stuff. I've been working with the security industry as well, and they're really, really hot into video. They want to see everything that goes on. They want to see you in real time. So that's another application. Blogging and podcasting is cool, right, Randy? Oh, yeah. Uh, the video blog here, but I think we could do more stuff now that we have a web server and asterisk. Why not publish voicemail as an RSS feed? Visual voicemail, anyone, without the iPhone. And of course, again and again and again, scalability. This is not really a personal interest, but because the way I work, the customers I work with, we keep coming back to scalability. I got a question the other day is, how do I build a network with 12,000 simultaneous calls with asterisk, pure asterisk? It's like, yep, we need to start with a rack, and then another rack, and then let's have fun. Let's move to the executive summary and finish this up, really. Open source will take you there, you guys know that, but when I speak for other crowds, I really need to hammer this in. Open source is much more commercial, capitalistic, competitive than any other software market. It's really interesting. What I think are important ar areas for us and all of us in Asterisk Org, the Asterisk community, full communication, audio, video, text, maybe we need to prepare for adding smell or some other media, I don't know.